All welcome to today's webinar, how to optimize your CXO cockpit application. The agenda for today is that we will look at version 6.2 to its fullest and we'll show you the best practices of CXO cockpit. I'm going to start with version 6.2 to its fullest. I will now go to CXO. In CXO, this is version 6.2, is the training application that most of you have access to. If you do not have access to your own training environment, please send an email to support and we will make sure to give you the username and details of your own application. In CXO, we have introduced in version 6 to the conversations. When I'm going through my reports, when I'm looking at the detail of reports, I'm opening up my product sales performance, for example, or when I open up my profit and loss and I would have some questions about my profit and loss. What I can do is I'm opening net sales, looking at computers and networking, and I have a question. I have a question to ask Jeroen. So I'm going to start my conversation. Oh. I'm going to start my conversation. I'm going to write question LAN cards. And as a participant, I will add Jeroen. And I'll start a conversation with Jeroen. I said, please, Jeroen, explain the variance on LAN cards. And I can send it to Jeroen. If I would then log in as Jeroen, I would then have the notification that there's a question for Jeroen. And as Jeroen, I can then uh, comment back to the webinar user that I'm logged into. This way you can have a conversation between two or more people. If Jeroen decides he's not the person to answer this question, he has the option to add more participants to this conversation. In CXO, we now have the option to also um, send emails when someone is not looking, not logged into CXO. Everything, by the way, indeed, I see a good question popping up. Someone is asking if all the reports that you're currently looking at, if that's also in your own training environment. Yes, it is. All of the reports are in the training environment as well. So I have the option here, if I look at webinar, I'm the user webinar. And the user webinar, in this example, we do not have an email address. But in your own application, your own CXO application, you can put in the email address. And when the SMTP server is set up, this allows that notifications are sent to your email address. When you're not logged on for two minutes, that's the standard setting in CXO, you will receive a notification by email. Notifications are also for storyboards. So when a storyboard is shared with you, when I have the storyboard, I want to share this storyboard with Jeroen. 
I can now choose how do I want to share this storyboard with Jeroen. I can make him a viewer, so he can only view the storyboard. I can make him an editor. He can then also add more reports to this storyboard, but he cannot delete the storyboard or nor share it. But when I make him a owner as well, he can then take over during my holidays and maintain the storyboard that is sent to, for example, the board. Storyboard permissions have been successfully edited. And also this is coming through the notifications panel. In the future, we will make sure to send the, uh, to use notifications panel for other things as well. And of course, you can also set your own profile picture if you would want to. As most of you know, in version 6.1 and earlier, we have had the option where you can edit your comments at the bottom, is that this would also be the place to lock your comments. This has changed now. We've moved the locking of the comments now at the top of the report. Why have we done that? In the past, we have only been able to lock the comments that were at the bottom of a report. But in 6.2, we've introduced the option that when you lock the comments on a report, you do not only lock the comments at the bottom of a report, but you lock the inline comments as well. And one request that we received from a customer is that for inline comments before, when you created inline comments, the comments were stored on the report in general. The comments were not stored on members. But we wanted to make sure that we store comments on members as well. So in CXO, we now have the option to store the comments on the members. This can be found in our designer. So let's now look at one of our line item comments. I know that I can search for my report, and I know that we have multiple reports with line item comments. So let's look at one of the line item comment reports. So in my report, I can see that I can create comments in this report in the last column. Now let's go to my last column and look at the format of my last column. The format of my last column is called comment. Let's look at how this is set up. So one thing I can see here is that the inline comments is shown rep. When it means rep, it means that I, it will now um, move the comments in two lines if it doesn't fit the width of the column. I will show you that in a second. As you can see, it's wrapping the columns, uh, the comments, I'm sorry, that means it is now spread over multiple lines. That is also introduced in version 6.2. I'm 
one second. Yes. Then here, when I choose all in my rows, I see a new column that's been added. And the column is named store comments on members. And when I check this, all of the comments will be stored on the members as well. Similar to the point of view comments at the bottom, but now based on the line that you've added your comments. What's more new in 6.2? In 6.2, we have a new feature that is called Storyboard Admin. Where can I find this Storyboard Admin? If I go to Security and I look at the user groups, and I would edit the user group, in Permission, you will see that we've added this Storyboard Admin. It is not checked on by default. So if you would like the admin group to be the storyboard admin, please make sure to go to the security and tick storyboard admin. Now what can we do as storyboard admin? In the tools, I as a storyboard admin now have storyboards. I now have an overview of all of the storyboards that are created within my application and also I can see who's the owner. It could be that when I'm working with CXO or the longer within my uh, organization that people have left and that maybe storyboards have become unowned. When a storyboard has become unowned, no one can change anything on the storyboard. Now with the storyboard admin, this, it now allows you to make yourself owner of an unowned storyboard. So when I ch choose no, of course, I don't see anything here, I will then have an overview of the unowned storyboard and I can add people to be owner of those storyboards. So we won't run into the issue where a admin or a controller have less, has left the company and no one is the owner of a storyboard anymore. What more have we introduced? If we go to application settings, if we look at the application settings, at the bottom we have use current entity by default and use current period by default. What does this mean? This means that when I'm logging into CXO on my homepage, and my homepage is now set to the month of October, I then start my storyboard. The storyboard is running for my current period because I was in CXO on the month of October. The next month, when the current period has changed in the variables, I then have, when I then log into CXO, November is shown in my homepage. That means when I then open up a storyboard, it's opened on November. So that means that you do not have to change your storyboard every month as in the past to make sure that the correct entity is in your storyboard. So looking at this storyboard, so if we would open up a storyboard, a question that we have received from customers is when I play my storyboard, can I then also print my full storyboard? So this has been added to CXO as well. We now have the option to print the complete storyboard as well. Let me go back to the designer and let me log in and create a report builder. I don't have a report builder yet, so I will create a report builder. Let's do that on the user, sorry.
gonna make I'm gonna make this person a report builder. And make sure I have access to all of the PL reports at least. So I'm a report builder. Let's go back to my incognito. Uh, let's log out of you as your room and log back in as a report builder. As a report builder, I can build reports. And when I built report, in the past there was one thing that I know was an issue at some of our customers because I'm going to build a new report as a report builder. I'm going to create a simple multi column report. The profit and loss, and of course, my time series simple report. But we all know that what I can't do as a report builder, I can't publish the report. And what if I wanted to test this report? What if I want to look what the report looks like in a different browser? Or I want to look in Chrome. I want to play around with the report. Or when I believe the report is final and my admin has published the report before, I was not able to be able to change the report again. So what have we now introduced? So if I would go to unpublished reports as the admin, I can see that the report builder has built this new report. So let me open up this new report. And let me go to the settings. I now have the option to place it in the menu. And this option has been introduced. The report can still be edited by a report builder. So I'm going to place it and then here drag and drop to destination. I'm going to keep the report editable by the report builder. And I'm going to set security. Uh, do it in the set base. So if I would go and log in as the report builder. What do I now see on my report? You see, it's now a report that has been published, and I can still change it. In the past, that was not possible. In the past, whenever it was published, I, as a report builder, could not change this report anymore. In 6.2, we've changed this, and we've made sure that the admin has the option to choose whether a report builder can change the report or not after publishing. In version 6.3, which is coming out somewhere end of this year, we will introduce also the linked cube calculations. The linked cube calculations will allow report builders to create their own cube calcs, which are linked to reports. So this is more about 6.2. What I also want to show you are best practices. Best practices that we came across in, let me go. So these are questions that we have received from customers. When we look at the configurator, when we look at the MDX logs, most of our customers notice that the times in the log files are not the same times as uh, they have their own computer on. So it could be that it's one time hour time difference, it could be more. But we can change that. Let me log on to our internal server. Yeah, 
this. Oh. Apologies, it's on the wrong screen. So we all know that in a configurator, we have this, we have this section called configuration. And during my training sessions, I always say to all of our customers, never touch it. Don't do anything. But what I'm going to show you now is something that needs to be changed in here. If we look for template equals, we will then find that here you will find different templates, different timestamps. How are the timestamps used? In this example, it's already been changed. But by changing it into the local, as you see here, the timestamp of your log files are now changed are now changed and will match your local time. Make sure to do that for all of the tabs. Make sure to do that for website, source system manager, export service, agent service, and configurator. And then the times in your log files will match. One of the questions that we recently run into a lot as well is export for S-based customers not working properly. What is that? By default, in CXO, when we roll out CXO, the export engine for use in process printing has been set to false. But when you work with SBase, please make sure to set in process printing to true. This will solve the issues with the export. What we sometimes also see at customers is that a customer have, has added a new source system. A source system has been added in the source system manager just to play around with. No reports have been built, it's connected, but it's not doing anything. Please don't do that in your production environment. Please use your acceptance, development, UAT, or whatever environment, test environment, don't do that in production. If you have a source system, that is not in use, no lists, no reports, please remove it for, from production. Then as you can see here, the last is a hidden URL. So how do I use this hidden URL? If I go back to CXO, and then I type my file slash get mdx over view file, if I click, if I select that here, what's going to happen? You see, I'm receiving a text file at the bottom. So let me open up the text file. In this text file, you get an overview of all of the cube cogs that have been created in my application. So when you have multiple applications, make sure to run this for multiple applications. It's now running on my demo because that's where I was logged into. You also see here the technical ID of the KubeCog. It can help you if you run into an error. I've had a customer asking me, I see this crazy coding for the KubeCog, where can I find it? This is the place where you can find it. And here you see the different KubeCogs. And what is difference compared to version 5? In version 5, we had the overview of KubeCogs, but we never had the overview of the MDX lists. The good thing is now that at the bottom of this overview, you also get the MDX lists that have been created in your application. So for example, here is a list for subset, a MDX list for subset. And this MDX list, the example is in here. This can help you to find a new MDX list, to manage your MDX list, to see if you understand what's happening. But also, this helps you to get an overview of the cube cogs and the MDX lists that have been created in your training environment. That can help you to create your own cube cogs and own MDX list in your own application.
let's go back to the presentation. In version 6, we have moved from template parameters to source system defaults. We've looked at all of the template parameters and we've looked, are they really necessary on template level? Or can we move them into source system defaults? Let's open up CXO. So here in tools, you'll find the source system defaults. And you can see that in my application where I'm logged into, I've got two source systems, one EPM, one CRM. In the source system defaults, I can find what is in the point of view. So for the EPM source system, I have these four dimensions as default in the point of view. And these are also the initial values. And not only the default point of view settings, but also the dimensions which are default for the commons. I always say, let's try to 95% of your reports you can, if they're on entity year period view, put that in the source system defaults. Of course, everything can be overruled on a report level. I, wouldn't, I will not encourage, encourage you to change this now on your current applications. What I want to make sure is that when you add a new source system, I sometimes come on a customer and I see that they have multiple source systems. And the first thing that I do is I always look at the source system defaults. And I then see that most of the source systems don't have the source system default. And I always ask them why. Most Mostly, it's answered, we don't know, we didn't know it was there. Please take 10 minutes to set up your source system defaults, because then at least you have a unique way of working through your application. Because in the other default settings, I also see my scaling. And it's easy to make sure that my scaling is correct on this level. I do it on source system level, and I make sure all of the source system that I add that I put the correct scaling here, and I know, don't need to change that on a report level. The same with precision, frequency. Of course, a new source system sometimes means new lists. And you could think, ah, I'm busy. I don't want to make this new list. But please take the time to do so. Create those new lists, just to make sure that they're there when you have a group of report builders or admins and they're looking for a rolling time series list that they always know which one to use and that they don't create it themselves. Because otherwise you run into a chance that you have multiple rolling time series lists. And you want to make sure that, for example, the breakdown sorting, that most of the times you do that all the same. The threshold, but also the palette, that you use the same palette, but also the rotate labels. So please, whenever you add a source system, make sure that one of the steps in the process is to go through your source system defaults. One thing that I also tell all of the customers is please go to application settings. Please look at first and of course, um, it's a simple question, I just saw it again, is I can't see all of the members in my point of view. I asked, could it be that it's the 11th level and could it be that your maximum depth is on 10? I yes, it was the case. So make sure in application settings are some crucial settings. The show drill all button. When you have performance issues, please tick this off because you don't want a user to click on show on drill all 
and it would take ages for a report to open. So please untick if you believe this should not be used by your users. We all know that the report previews, we would prefer to have them generated based on one user. But if I go to advanced, what more do I see? I see my enable MDX login. When I'm doing an, doing an implementation or a POC, when I'm still building reports, I have this enabled. But when I'm done, the a month in process, I don't need to change anything. I don't have any issues. I, un, I disable MDX login. So only when you're debugging, you run into issues, enable this. Then in my presentation, I've listed a couple of performance improvements, and these are performance improvements for MDX. What we have noticed is that when in a kubecalc you do A plus B, is can be done easier and can, can be done with a sum. So if you use your sum instead of a plus, will increase, increase performance. When we look at customers, SAP customers, a lot of SAP customers, we work with in-string. We're working with the in-string, for example, in-string the time, does it have 2017 in there? If yes, then I want it to do blah, blah, blah. But change it now, this, and change this to use the properties. And when you use properties, instead of in-string, you will notice your report will be a bit quicker. Also, one of the rules is, if you have cube cogs, if you have, if you have cube cogs on both rows and columns, your report will be slower, compared to having cube cogs on either rows or columns. One thing that we see as well is that when you have a cube calculation and you make sure that the members that are used in your cube cog are already present in your list, however not visible, the cube cog will run faster. So this will also improve performance. Let's, let's go back to CXO. We've talked about the source system defaults and I know in the beginning, I also thought, yeah, right, I've got a new source system. So why would I would want to have all these lists? But the more and more I work with CXO, I think, hmm, it could be handy that one person creates these standard lists. So my time series rolling. Let's look at my lists. I must have, sorry, a time series rolling for my EPM. So the list used for EPM is my months. And the months, of course, it's a simple list. And we have customers asking us, so what if we copy a list and we change the source system? Can we do that? So let's try. Let's try to copy this list. It's a copy. If I would then change this list to a different source system, so I take out the period from EPM and I change that to the period of CRM, what happens then? It's all wiped out. It's gone. I hate that because that means I need to tell the customer, sorry, I can't copy a list to a different source system. But there's a little trick. So let's copy this list again. Oh. 
And now, instead of directly changing the dimensions, I'm first going to change the list type. I'm going to change the list type into match. Because that allows me to have multiple source systems in my list. And that allows me to add the period of CRM. It's still not a perfect copy, but it does make my life easier because I do know that I now only have to copy what I've got, what I can see in the EPM column. So I'm just going to do it for five periods only. When I then take out the period from EPM, And I change back the list into normal. I have now a list again. Of course, January till December we can all remember. But if you have more complicated lists with multiple dimensions, this is an easy way of copying and helping um, to see what you had originally in your list. You all know that on our wiki, we have a lot of interesting information. So whenever we run into challenges at customers, whenever we, we believe we see something that is interesting for customers, sorry, this was not the one I was looking for. So, for example, about a year ago, year ago, we ran into the, we, we got a question from a customer: is can we work with dynamic custom descriptions? Well, we all say to you, we can't. There's only one thing we can do. When you have an application that contains, for example, for all of your entities, the word national, or for all of your entities that's to start with. M for managerial, but you do not want to show that M. We can then use a replace function. And a replace function in this case would show M, and M underscore, for example, will be replaced by nothing. So then in one go, in for example, pull an MDX list, through a rule, you can then replace the M underscore for all of your entities. So one thing more that I had a request from the other day is one of our customers asked, is it possible to show in one of my in, my, in a bars and lines chart, how can I show my current month into a different color? I love pink, so I chose pink in this example. I know that on our wiki we have a explanation with um, cube cogs but it can be much simpler and I want to share that with you we all know hopefully the functionality in CXO to work with current year so if I look at my list my list is a current year only list this tick box for current year only appears when the year is added to your list. So what have I done and what does it do in CXO? So in my list, I have added 13 periods for the actuals, as you can see, category actuals, and then 12 periods for budget. But CXO knows that I only want to show the current year. So it knows in this example, when the point of view is set to September, it only shows January till December. So three months of budget and nine months of actuals. And what have I done? I've changed the format 
on my current month, edit current month, and what have I done in the chart? I gave it a different color. By doing this, my current month is shown pink. If I would like to do that for all actuals, I need to change the format of all actuals. And of course, the same goes if you want to do it only for budget. And if I would then change my point of view, you can see also the month, the color changes. This is the actual month that I'm looking at in my point of view. And what more did I do in this report? I added the stacked. I changed in my rows list, the, sorry, in my bars list. My bars list, I changed the format because in CXO we always show the data on top of a bar. But in this example, I wanted to show the data label in the middle of my bar. And how do I do that? It's a little trick. And that little trick that I have is, I call it stacked. So in my chart, the only thing I did is I showed it as stacked. And when I show something as stacked, it immediately moves the labels to the middle of the bar. Now, what if I have multiple bars and I still I want to show a total? Let's see if we can do that here. I'm just going to show the total. It will be the same number, but I want to show the total at the top in combination of a stacked bar. So let's use then for my chart a line series. And I'm also going to use that the current actuals for my line. I can see the lines now, but I want to see the data labels. But I don't want to see the lines. I only want to have it for the data labels. So what do I do? I'm going to create a new format. I'm going to call that scattered. Why do I call that scattered? Because in the charts, I have the option to work with scattered. Scatter means it's only showing the markers. It's not showing the lines. I even can decide that I have the marker size none. So it shows the data only. It's a little trick if you want to combine stacked columns, but also show the total data. What I want to show you as well is we use this now uh, more and more at customers is our redirect. We all know what a redirect does. A redirect directs you to a different report. So from this report, I want to redirect it to a trend. And if I choose net sales and I click on net sales, I want it to open my trend on net sales. If I go back and I want my report to open on gross margin, I click gross margin and you can see immediately it changes and shows the trend now for gross margin. It's a simple trick. The only thing you need to do, what we do a lot, is we put this as an item selector in our graph. But don't do that. When you put this as an option in the point of view with the point of view list and you make sure to use the same list as you had in your rows of the previous report, CXO will recognize to use the same account.
And this also is an example, the report that you're currently looking at, of a trend graph that we have built ourselves in CXO based on a bars and line chart. If you would like to know more on how to do so, we have that also on our wiki. Rebuild a trend graph using a free format template. You can find instructions, instructions here how to do so. So we've looked at all these. And the last things I would like to show you, and after that I would like to go to the questions, because I see there are some questions. Oh, sorry. I remember we got contacted by one of our customers. One of our customers said, hey, CXO, no one can access CXO anymore. What has happened? Why can we not uh, get into CXO anymore? The good thing was that the admins could still enter CXO. So we could take a look in CXO at why could users not log into CXO. We could not see upfront what was happening. So what did we do? As an admin, we went to tools and we exported the user's data. You have the option now in version 6 to look at either usage data or audit trail. Usage data is the same as statistics in version 5. You will see who's logged in, which version. I use this a lot during a POC. I want to make sure that during a POC, my prospects are not looking at CXO with IE7. I want to make sure they use the proper web browser. But to go back to the customer that had the issue with users not being able to log in, we ran the audit trail for a week and we looked at the security. And what we could see there is that by accident, the ZBay security group was deleted. And by deleting the ZBay security group at that customer, no one was able to access any of the reports. So be aware, there's a lot of information in both users data and audit trail. Then the last things I want to show you are some links. Some links to, for example, the SBase MDX tutorial. When there's new people in your company and you would like to show them more about MDX, people ask me, is there a training available? Yes, we can help you. But I also want to show you this. Right in MDX Greece is a tutorial. It explains the different elements. It explains the tuples. It explains the sets. It's a way, it's something you can give to your new admins as reading material and understanding how does MDX work. And especially for SBase, it also shows you which um, for formulas, so which MDX expressions can I use in CXO and which can't I use in CXO. Another link I want to share with you is a link again to our wiki. It's the Getting Started. It's a presentation about the designer. So when you're new to version 6, you can download this and it will guide you through our new designer. This can also, of course, be used as a quick reference card, which you can sh give to new admins. You can download it from our wiki and you can use it within your organization. Then Jeroen has also created this really nice report security document. 
I got the question a couple of weeks ago, do you have a good overview on how security works in CXO? And I point them to this document, a document about the security of CXO. How does CXO work? I had the question, what does draft data do? It's all explained in the document. You can use that within your organization to explain a bit more, but also as a guideline. And then, of course, when we're talking about security, one thing I think that most of our customers miss in CXO is the option to see which user belongs to which group. Of course, we want to make sure that this is going to be part of CXO in the future. But to make sure that we help you now, we have created an article. An article on our wiki with the script that you can run on SQL to have an overview of the users and the user groups. We will make sure to also distribute the presentation to make sure that you have the links and have also the examples that I've shown in the presentation. And of course, I, will, I want to end this presentation with my Do Not Forget links that I always show to all of our customers during a training. I always want to make sure, go to our website you should know every one of your company, the people that are new, make sure to tell them, go to the resources on the website of CXO. It gives you the links to documentation, our YouTube Academy, the portal for AHA, and the customer, communi customer communities. And of course, for MDX, I recommend two sites, the site of MDX Expert and as well the site of Microsoft. Make sure to give this to your new admins, plus also put it in your bookmarks. This was my presentation. I'm going to look at some of the questions that I've seen. Ooh. There's a lot of questions, so let me see which I'm going to have some questions we're going to look at now and some we might come back to you later. Um, so one question is, can you elaborate a little bit on the type of notifications events? One thing that we're currently working on and what we're looking at is, for example, the news item. The news item that we have in CXO is always attached to the object news item. But we do see that people are asking, can we also push something? Can we make sure to tell people that, for example, the period of November is ready? We're looking to see how we can get that in the notifications. Let me look at the other questions. In C CXO is really good in multi-source reporting. So if we look at our application here, let's go back to the web. Because one question that I see here, is it possible to use two different sources in a report? So let's see. We have a menu, a menu especially for showing this. It's multi-source and DVA, the data warehouse adapter. I do say to customers who are thinking about this data warehouse adapter, Please go to your training environment. Please take a look and play around because there's a data warehouse adapter connected and you can play around and load data. But not only are you 
able to load data in the data warehouse adapter. But you will also see we have reports. Reports combine in data from two source systems. As you can see, the top is common from the source system named CRM. This line is common from the source system EPM and the difference is shown here. So yes, we can combine different source systems in one report. And yes, indeed, the slides will be shared and they will, uh, will be shared with you. So I want to end this webinar and I will make sure that the questions we have not answered yet that will come back to you um, personally. I'd like to thank you all for listening to the webinar.